It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to the Science Bowl, the science quiz program here in the Prince George's County Public Schools, all about science literacy and uh, hoping that you will play along and answer some of our questions as well and maybe raise your science IQs just a point or two. We're coming to you via Zoom as we did last year because of the pandemic. All of our students are in their schools and they are consulting with each other. Uh, we are keeping some things the same. We're keeping our same six categories that we've had traditionally for the past 35 years. Green things about plants, zoo parade with the animals, body systems, let's get physical, chemistry, physics, earth science, and space science, science potpourri, a grab bag of science questions, and our sixth category is dateline science, science history, and science in the news. All of our teams get 50 points just for showing up and looking as good as they do. And each of our teams today, of two teams competing, will receive 18 questions. No buzzers, they're not competing directly. But the team that is ahead after the two rounds here today, nine and nine and nine and nine questions, will come back to play again for the chance to go into the semifinals. In each of the categories, we have a five point question, a 15 point question, and a 25 point question. So let's wish our teams luck. Today we're going to be featuring two teams that have won once already. We're going to start out with Akakik and finish up with the Robert Goddard School. So it is time now to meet the team from Akakik Academy. Let's say hello to Lillian. Lillian waved everybody at home if you would. Lillian has been with our show for a number of years and she's a great player. She's joined by Alan. Hey, Alan. Alan, the Hi. first time he was here, he was a little nervous. Are you less nervous this time, Alan? Yep. Good All right. <laughs> yeah, he's an old pro at this now too. And Roan? Good to have you with us as well. How about you? You feeling good? Yeah. All right. That's great. All right. Well, let's get to our questions. We start with our green things category. Three questions, a five, a 15, and a 25. Here's your five-point question, Akakik, and green things. Farmers growing beets and turnips and carrots could be said to be going back to their what? Roots? Roots? Yeah, yeah, roots. Yeah, going back to their roots because those are all root vegetables. Good answer. 15 points in green things. The United States is considering outlawing menthol cigarettes, which are cigarettes flavored with this herb that's often used in breath candies and toothpastes. Mint. 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 Mint, Mint it is indeed. Here's the 25 point question. You're doing great. At the running of the Preakness Horse Race, which is held every year at Baltimore's Pimlico Racecourse, the winning horse is draped with a blanket of yellow daisies whose centers have been painted with black lacquer to make them resemble what Maryland state flower that isn't in bloom when the race occurs. Um, black flowers, wait, no, black flowers, because some flowers are yellow. Black centers, right? Yes. Um, when do sunflowers grow? I don't know. So should, should we go with sunflowers? Sunflowers? Sunflowers is a good guess. The reason they have to paint the inside of the daisies black is because the Maryland State flower is called the Black-Eyed Susan. The Black-Eyed Susan. That was the 25-pointer. All right, let's get to the zoo. Five points. A lobster fisherman in Maine recently had a terrifying and unforgettable experience when he was inadvertently swallowed by one of these leviathans, just like Jonah was in the Bible. Would it be a whale? It would be a whale. Oh, I forgot what the whale was called, Joe. Yeah, whale? Yeah, Jonah was swallowed by the whale, and so was that fisherman. But the, uh, the whale realized, wait a minute, this is not right, and he, uh, he coughed him back up. And uh, the guy was no worse for the wear, but he's going to never forget that experience. Good answer. 15 points in the zoo coming up. With their piercing and sucking mouth parts, cicadas, which we all remember from last summer, cicadas belong to the order of insects known as hemiptera. 
H-E-M-I-P-T-E-R-A, which are the only insects which can be truly called these, the term that most people use for all insects. Well, insects? Uh, no. Well, insects are all insects. Yeah. Burrow bugs? Huh? Burrow bugs? Both? Um, wait, burrow bugs? Burrow. Burrow bugs? No. Okay, what, what's our answer there? Uh, burrow bugs? The correct answer is just bugs. Bugs. Yeah, those hemipterans are the true bugs. Like, you've heard of stink bugs? That's a true bug. But if you call, if you call a praying mantis a bug, that's not really correct. It belongs to a far different category. Insect is the better term. All right, here's the 25-point question in Zoo Parade. While there are arachnicides, chemicals that can kill spiders, there are no reliable chemicals that just keep them away from you, such as DEET, a kind of R-initialed substance that usually keeps ticks and chiggers and mosquitoes away. Those chemicals that keep those things away are known by what R-initialed name? Would it be a repellent? Yeah, repellent. You got it right. It is. It is the repellent. Good. You got yourself 25 points. You needed those. Here are your last three questions in the first round. Let's go to the body. In cartoons, it happens all the time. Someone gets clobbered on the head, and they are shown seeing these celestial bodies, which are normally best seen with a telescope. Stars? Stars. stars. Yeah, they see stars. Absolutely right. For 15 points, there's a multiple choice question. The three arches in each of your feet are formed and supported by metacarpal bones, metatarsal bones, or clavicle bones? Clavicle. The arches... I think it's clavicle. Oh, sorry, Mr. Z. I will repeat it. Yes, the three arches in each of your feet are formed and supported by your metacarpal, metatarsal, or clavicle bones. Your torso is your waist, and then your um, carpal is on the side. clavicle. Yeah, carpal is like in your back. So clavicle? Clavicle? Clavicle is actually up here. That's your collarbone. Metacarpal are the bones in your wrist, like the carpal tunnel syndrome. And it's the metatarsal bones. All those, the most bones in your body are found in your feet. Many of them are metatarsal bones. Let's go to 25 points in body systems. Last question of your first nine. Doctors are excited that optogenetic therapy can now help some people suffering from RP, retinitis pigmentosa, to be able to do this even just a little bit better. Does anyone know what retinitis pigmentosa is? It sounds like vitiligo. Vitiligo, what's that? Yeah. I think so. Because pigment is like the color. I think it's... Let me, let, me, let me read it for you again. This new therapy they have, they call it optogenetic therapy, is helping people who have RP, retinitis pigmentosa, to be able to do this even just a little bit better. C. 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 Say it again. C. C is right. Absolutely right, because the retina is in the back of the eye. And yes, see, it was good for you to discuss that. You got yourself 25 more points. All right, you're at 130 points. All right, Akiki, good round. We'll see you back in a couple of minutes. And now let's meet the team from Robert Goddard Middle School, and here are the players. Our captain, Teddy. Hey, Teddy, wave to everybody at home if you would. Great guy. He is joined by Sylvie. Hey, Sylvie. Also an excellent player, always weighs in with good advice. And Andrea. Andrea, a super player as well. She's with us today. Everybody is on Zoom, and we're here playing the science ball. The chance to move on. One of the two schools today, Akakik or Robert Goddard, to be the first of our semifinalists. All right. If you're ready, teams, let's go and get to your green things questions. A five, a 10, and a 15-pointer. Here's your five-point question in green things. Some botanists have taken to calling the gas methane given off by dead trees by what same name that is usually not said in polite company as when cows and yes, we people release methane. Um, 
fart. Yeah, fart. fart. That's right. Trees can fart too. Absolutely <laughs> right. Good. Thanks for indulging me on that one. All right, let's do the 15 point question. It is a visual. Have a look. There's an artist by the name of Georgia O'Keeffe, and she painted yeah. this leaf. It's the leaf of a tree that is often described as mighty. It's an oak. Yeah, oak. It is an oak, the mighty oak tree. Absolutely right. Excellent. 25 points in green things. Good, let's run the category here. After the cicada, cicada nymphs emerged from their shells, they started climbing the trunks of nearby trees, trying to reach the top of the trees, known as this area. The canopy? Yes, it is the canopy. And a lot of them didn't make it all the way there as we saw so many branches with dead leaves up toward the top. Uh, but not all the way to the tippy top there. Let's go to the zoo. Zoo parade for five points. Courageous people are known as having the heart of this animal, who in the Wizard of Oz famously lacked courage. Lion? Yeah, lion. The lion, that's right. That's why he's going to Oz. He wanted to get his courage for 15 points in the zoo. Bats and dolphins use this reverberating tactic to navigate and to locate prey. Echolocation. Yeah, echo echolocation. Location. Right. And we would have accepted sonar as well. Good plan. For 25 points, uh, an unusual story at the National Zoo. A sad story as well. After two of the three cheetah cubs born recently in the National Zoo were stillborn, the mother cheetah was seen eating both of the carcasses of her two unborn and dead cubs. That's odd behavior. But in the wild, it would be of what benefit to her and her surviving cub? Why would it make sense to eat those two dead cubs? Of what benefit would it be to the mother cheetah and her surviving cub? Think about that. There was like a shortage of other animals. Well, like more, more nutrients, right? For her and to pick more milk for the surviving cubs, right? Yeah. So, more food in general. So, what do we say? More nutrients. More food. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, okay. Go ahead, Teddy. So the. Uh, Mom, cheetah can have more nutrients for herself and for the surviving cubs. Okay. Um, yes, we can. Uh, we'll give you that because yes, she's got to produce milk for that other cub, and those nutrients would come in. Uh, uh, perhaps a better reason would be the smell of those dead cubs would attract predators, and she wants to make sure that there are no hyenas and all out there looking to come in to eat her surviving cub out there. But the nutrition uh, is valid, so we will give you those points. Let's move on to the body systems for five points. Of your body's five senses, the only one not confined to your head is this one. Uh, touch. touch. Touch, that's it, good, 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 good. Body system for 15. Even if you have an intolerance for this L-initialed milk sugar, which is found in most kinds of cheese, you can still eat some Swiss and cheddar cheeses because they have very little of it. Lactose. Lactose, Lactose is right. Yes, indeed. 25 points in body systems. An oxidizing chemical known as perchlorate, which is released when fireworks explode, can damage these, can damage hormones released by what endocrine gland in your neck? The thyroid. It is the thyroid for 25 points. Excellent round for you guys. You end up with the first nine questions with 185 points. Nicely played, nicely played. All right, our team from Akakik is back, and before we ask the last nine of their questions, let's find out a little bit about our players. If you didn't have the pleasure of meeting them the last time, 
they were on here on the show. Let's talk to uh, Lillian, the captain. And Lillian, you told us uh, this is a very comfortable place for you because you've been on our show a number of times. Uh, why do you keep coming back? We're happy you do. Um, I think it's because science bowl is fun. It's a, it's great to have a competition like this where it's not just one person against one person, but you can work with the team and put in answers together, and it's, it's fun. Well, you're, you're an advertisement for the show because that's exactly why we do this. You know, we want you to learn some things. We want you also to share with us what you already know. But the most important thing is to have some fun and uh, to see that science is found everywhere and all around you. And it's going to see you through life in many, many ways, many that you don't even imagine. And you have some career goals already or are you still thinking about that? Um, I want to become either a writer or a violinist, but I'm not quite sure yet. Yeah. I asked you before if you played the violin, and obviously you do. How long have you played it? Um, since first grade. Wow, wow. I am Now, is there a concert band that you are part of? Uh, yeah, I'm actually part of the Charles County Youth Orchestra. Oh, congratulations on that. And one more thing before I leave you. You want to be a writer. What would you like to write? Do you like fiction or nonfiction? Do you want to be a reporter? Have you thought about that? Oh, I want to write fiction. Um, I'm very creative and I, and I, you know, I just t like taking all my ideas and sort of organizing them. I have my wow. entire solar uh. system already. Uh, you're, you're an impressive young lady, and uh, we're going to follow. We're going we're gonna to hear about you in the future, for sure. Let's talk to your teammates, and let's talk to Alan. And Alan, the, when you were here the first time, you, you seemed a little nervous. And you know, anytime you're new, you should be a little nervous, but you seem more confident now. How do you know so much science? Uh, honestly, I don't really. I watch a lot of TV. Like, one of my favorite shows was The Big Bang Theory, and that has some science sprinkled around in it, so that's where I got some of my things. And I used to do a lot, I like, I used to want to be a scientist when I grew up, when I grew up, so I would study that a lot. You've done all the right things, and I was a huge fan of The Big Bang Theory. Sheldon Cooper was an amazing guy, wasn't he? Yeah. Kind of, kind of quirky, but he knew his physics. Nice to have you with us today. And let's see, the last member of the team, Roan, um, how about you? How do you come by your science knowledge? Uh, mainly, I watch a lot of YouTube science videos, so that kind of just sticks in my brain. So, oh yeah, I just watch a lot of science videos, so I remember stuff from them. Yeah, can I ask you, do you have a favorite science show? Uh, Bill I. Hey, Rowan, the correct answer is the science bowl. The science bowl. <laughs> I'm, I'm trolling for, an adver for a plug here. I'm just playing with you, young man. Thanks for playing along with me. Let's get back into the game here. And I have nine more questions for you, Akakik, from Let's Get Physical, Potpourri, and Dateline Science. So if you are ready, here is your five-point question, Let's Get Physical, and it is a visual question. So have a look. The recent annular eclipse of the, of the sun, the recent annular eclipse of the sun by the moon, in which the moon did not completely cover the sun, was also called by what other name, usually given the area around the Pacific Ocean where volcanoes and earthquakes often occur. It's known as the ring of what? Fire. fire. Yeah, the ring of fire. You got it. Five points. Good going. Ten, 15 points and let's get physical. The Juno spacecraft has just sent back some close-up pictures of the surface of Ganymede, Jupiter's largest moon, that is actually bigger than what's smallest of our planets. What is the biggest? Well, the Pluto is in a planet, right? Is Venus the smallest? I think so. Oh. Venus? Oh, you needed to go one step closer to the sun. Mercury. Mercury is the smallest of all the planets. And yeah, Pluto got kicked out. Got kicked out of the club a couple years ago, Lily, and I'm still upset about that. A lot of people are. Here's 25 points and let's get physical. There's so many shortages nowadays. One of them is a shortage of chlorine, which is used to disinfect swimming pools. So swimming pool owners are switching to a similar chemical. 
in the halogen family on the periodic table with the chemical symbol capital B, as in boy, small r. What Bond. chemical is that? The boron. Boron? Boron? Not bo no, boron, good guess. Boron is just a capital B. Capital B, small r, is bromine. Bromine is very similar to chlorine. It is a good disinfectant. Let's do potpourri. You'll get this one. Any of you ever been to Disneyland or Walt Disney World in Orlando? Yep. Yeah. Then you'll know about this. Walt Disney, the man who created all of those and came up with Mickey Mouse, he made sure that none of his amusement parks, like Disneyland and Walt Disney World, had any standing water. Even the Roofs on buildings are slanted so that the water runs off and away. He did that so that no visitors to his parks ever have to worry about being bitten by these insects, which breed in standing water. Mosquitoes? Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes is right. Yeah, you don't find any mosquitoes there because Walt made sure there was no water sitting around anywhere. 15 points in potpourri. Good answer. The new COVID-19 viral variant that originated in India and still threatens us today in the United States is named for what fourth Greek alphabet letter that also describes the swampy area where rivers meet the sea and is also the name of a big United States airline. Delta. You got it, Delta is correct, excellent answer. Let's go to 25 points in potpourri. When it comes to allergies, any of you have allergies out there? Yeah, they're not fun to deal with. When it comes to allergies, doctors talk about the five Ds. Dirt, dogs, vitamin D. Exposure to all of those things will reduce the chances of getting an allergy. But then there's D, dry skin, which increases the chance. And this D, which is about more than just calories. Mm -hmm. Has to begin with a D. So calories are something like fat and stuff. Saturated fat. What else do they have? Diet, 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 diet. Diet it is. Who pulled that out of the hat? Who said diet? Thank you very much. That's you're a great captain there, Lillian. Diet is the other D. All right, three more questions, stick with me. Dateline, five points. President Biden has rejoined the United States to a group called WHO, a group that has been monitoring COVID and other diseases. The W stands for world. The O stands for organization. What is the H stand for? Oh, health. Uh, health is right indeed, the World Health Organization. You nailed it. 15 points. NASA, you know we're going back to the moon. We're going back to the moon. We haven't been there in a long time. NASA has named its new return to the moon program Artemis, who was a sibling, a sibling of the mythological Apollo. Because when America does launch for the moon again, who will be aboard on the way to the moon for the first time ever? So wait, 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 wait. Would it be on something? I thought it was, um, what? Can we hear the question again? Yes. NASA has named its new Return to the Moon program Artemis because Artemis was a sibling of the mythological Apollo. Apollo was the name of the former moon project. So when America launches to the moon next time, it will be the first time ever that who is aboard that spacecraft. The key word there was sibling, sibling. So Artemis was the sister of Apollo. So the first, this will be the first woman ever to go to the moon. That's why they called it Artemis. Let's try this last one for 25 points. This Famous physicist, a big fan of the Simpsons. He appeared many times on that cartoon and is associated with the discovery of black holes 
is having his laboratory, his wheelchair, and all his papers preserved at England's Cambridge University. He also, Alan, appeared on the Big Bang Theory. Name that physicist. Stephen Hawking. You got it. Stephen Hawking, 25 points. That's the way to do it. 210 points. All right, guys. Again, a phenomenal score. Let's see if that will hold up. All right, our Robert Goddard team is back with us for their second nine questions. Let's find out a little bit about the players. Let's go to Teddy first. And Teddy, share with the audience, boy, you know your stuff backwards and forwards. How do you know so much science? Share your secrets. Well, um, there is uh, TV, and I watched a piece of it of PBS Kids, which has uh, educational content. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's where I've learned a lot of my science. Absolutely and, uh, right. Go ahead. There's also Keep going. YouTube, which I've learned some science from there, but uh, I think I've learned more from PBS Kids. That's just great to hear because, you know, that's one of the advantages of so much media today. You can see so much. It's almost overwhelming sometimes. You know, who can keep up with everything? But, you know, if you have a curiosity about the world, which you obviously do, you and your teammates, a lot of this is sinking in because uh, it helps you cope with the world better if you know what's going on and you understand the science about what makes things happen. All right. Uh, tell me about uh, what it's been like to be a student during the pandemic. Have you liked being on Zoom? Well, uh, it's been different and Zoom, Zoom has been challenging at times because of all, not just Zoom, but just all the technology related to Zoom and sometimes they failed us. So uh, it's sometimes it has been challenging. Absolutely. And, you know, this is on Zoom, but uh, I know you're probably very glad to be back in a real school with all your friends and real teachers in front of you. Let's talk to some of your teammates. Let's go to Sam. Hey, Sam. Hello. Sam, tell us. Nice to have you back. Tell us uh, what it is that you did to prepare for today's games. Uh, I mean, I just had some kids and my father um, quiz me from like previous competitions and I've gotten pretty good using that method. Well, you have gotten pretty good because you're showing that here today. Do you have a favorite branch of science? Uh, I like probably biology the most. Yeah, biology. There's something about, I was a former biology teacher, and, you know, we don't dissect animals like we used to. That's all done digitally and virtually. But there's something about getting in the lab and working with living creatures. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it helps you understand yourself better. Let's talk to your other teammate there, Lydia. Lydia, nice to have you with us today. And let me ask you, too, how do you know your science? Where do you get all your science information? Obviously from your teachers, but where else? Um, I also, as well, used to watch a lot of PBS Kids, and my mom is actually a science teacher, so a lot of times I just listen to her sometimes when she's, like, planning classes or teaching her classes when she would teach on Zoom. Wow. Boy, how proud she must be of you. You've got a teacher, you've got a science teacher there at Robert Garden. You've got one at home, so you're getting science wherever you go. <laughs> Round the clock, you're playing a nice game. Let's get back into it. Let's get physical. Potpourri and Dateline remain here, so let's get physical for five points. To slow down global warming, most of the world's countries are aiming to keep the rise of heat to less than two degrees on this scale, which most countries use. Uh, Celsius. Celsius, yeah. Celsius yeah. or centigrade, indeed, yes. For the 15-point question, I have a visual for you. Let's have a look. The rotors of the Ingenuity helicopter, which you're looking at right there, sitting on the surface of Mars, the rotors of that helicopter, which was the first such flight ever on another planet, had to spin at 2,500 RPMs to get airborne, since Mars's atmosphere is just 1 100th as dense as our own. 15 points if you could tell me what RPMs stand for. Rotations per minute. Again, please. Rotations per minute. Yes, that is correct. Good. Next, we have a multiple choice question for you. The Chinese booster rocket that fell to Earth recently, landing in the Indian Ocean, 
tumbled through which of the following? The biosphere, the ionosphere, or the mesosphere? Part of the atmosphere. Yeah. Well, the mesosphere is that also part of the atmosphere? I don't know. I think the mesosphere is part of the atmosphere. I think it's lower than the ionosphere. So, would it be just that, sh that height or? Yeah, I think it's the. Uh, so, Teddy, Teddy, what do you think? I think it's the mesosphere. It is the mesosphere, and I liked how you came to that conclusion because you did it by a process of elimination. Nicely done. Good playing. All right, let's go to potpourri. Five points. Each unit of a rice plant, like that of a corn plant, is known as one of these, even though neither can actually hear. Or hear of rice, I guess. Uh, no. So, an ear, we all agree on ear? Yes. Yeah. It is an ear of corn and an ear of rice, even though you don't hear that phrase too often. Good playing. 20, uh, 15 points in potpourri. Even though butterflies like to feed on the flowers of the butterfly bush, laying their eggs on the plant is not advisable, since these that emerge from the eggs find the leaves of the plant inedible. There's a few points. Um, well, you two both said larvae, so. Yeah. Let's go with it. Uh, larvae? Larvae it is. Larvae or caterpillars we would have accepted. Nicely done. 25 points in potpourri. In addition to controlling our tides, the moon also keeps our Earth from wobbling on what structure that makes our planet more stable and livable. Uh, I hear s well, that, that's rotation, so the axis, the axis probably does make it more livable. Yeah, so I think it's axis. It is axis. 25 more points. Good playing again. Dateline for five points. Three more questions, Robert Goddard. Here we go. Botanists have found that forest fires, which almost never occur in the winter, are continuing to burn in some areas underground where the peat is rich in carbon. After the snow melts, they then resume burning above ground. Since these fires refuse to die, they've been given this, giving this living dead nickname. Since these fires refuse to die, they've been given this living dead nickname. What you got, Teddy? Probably, I think zombie. Okay, uh, zombie? Yeah, those are zombie fires. That's it, exactly right. Here's for 15 points in Dateline. Jupiter's moon count that has kept rising is currently 79. But the planet's first four moons, the four largest, were discovered by what famed Italian astronomer? Galileo. Galileo. Yes, they're the Gal Galilean moons. Excellent work. Last question for you in the game is a multiple choice. 25 points. The first ever patient diagnosed with COVID-19, as with the first pa patient of any new disease, is known as the index case, or which of the following? Patient number one, patient X, or patient zero? I think it's patient X. I think it's patient zero, because like, you know how it's like zero, the zero guy of like a hurricane or an earthquake? So I think the same principle could be applied to uh, diseases. Do you agree? Okay, uh, patient zero. You got it. 25 more points, patient zero. You didn't get zero, you got 25 points, and as you may have noticed, you didn't miss anything. 320 points, perfect score, guys. Perfect scores, congratulations, congratulations.
What a terrific game it was here. And yes, we see a school is going to be moving on to the November 9th semifinals. All of these students here played, and I don't know if you were able to keep up at home because as tough as these questions were, very few of them were able to stump today's plays. That's how good they are and how good they were. We congratulate each and every one of them, and we especially congratulate their coaches, Mr. Prez over there at Robert Goddard, and Ms. Edmiston down at Akakik, and Ms. Powell also at Goddard. And I know Ms. Adams, the principal at Akakik, is uh, out there. We can't see her at the moment, but she's proud of you guys as well. Pride expresses it and gratitude for doing what you did because this was not required. You did this, you took the chance. There's Judy. Judy, nice to have you here. Yeah. Getting, you showed everybody in Prince George's County who's watching on YouTube and on television what great STEM students are. And not only that, you brought a lot of honor to yourselves and to your families. Our final tally today is Akakik 210 points and Robert Goddard, and this is a rarity, a perfect score. 320 points, not a single question missed. So this is, a, it is a, has, an historic occasion and we congratulate you and we will be seeing you in the playoffs. And we've not seen the last of Akakik either. All of the, you players are just amazing there and keep doing what you've been doing because this is just the start. It's the continuation of stellar careers for the three of you. Thanks everybody for being here today. I'm Dave Zier and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye everybody.